Today, we're going to start to work with our simplification processes to start verifying trig identities. Just to note, we're used to seeing things like this, the sine of x equals 0, which technically has several answers. Um, pi 0 would be 1. Um, and we would keep going from there, 2 pi, 3 pi. So essentially, we could summarize that as x equals pi times some integer k. We're used to seeing that, but now we're going to work towards identities. And the difference between what we just solved, which was a conditional expression, is that an identity is true for all values. Um, so the items that we're looking at today is always going to be true. It's essentially an extension of the identities that we have. A few hints as you work through these, and we're going to spend quite a few days working through these because they can be tough. First off, pick the more complicated side. It's going to be a lot easier to simplify this more complicated side down to 1 versus trying to turn 1 into this complicated expression. So I'm going to start with this one side. I'm first going to factor out the cosecant of x squared. So I'm left with 1 minus the cosine of x squared equals 1. Now here we can use the Pythagorean identity to say this is the sine of x squared times the cosecant squared of x. Um, and there we used the Pythagorean identity. From there, we'll use the reciprocal identity. So we can write this as 1 over the sine squared of x times the sine squared of x, which we know is equal to 1. And I probably should have just left these out because I'm trying to get to the end here um, and prove that it does get to that result.